What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Kicking It With Kachi, where we highlight individuals that are honestly taking the industry by storm. And right now, we have the honor, the distinction, and the pleasure of kicking it with none other but legendary music artist, TG. Everybody give it for TG in the comments. I hope to see fire emojis when this video drops because this is a fire, fire artist. Thank you, bro, for coming in and uh, kicking it with me today. For sure. Appreciate you guys for real. Of course, of course. And honestly, you know, we just want to get right to the beginning, right? Just go right into the story, the thick of things. Like, what made you want to get into music? What sort of had you uh, passionate for music? What was your start, essentially, in music? And, you know, what made you want to kind of decide to turn that passion into something that you want to do full time? So uh, it started really early. I was doing a lot of, like, cover songs. I was, like, kind of, uh, when I was growing up, I was doing a lot of covers, doing, like, Michael Jackson, covering songs like U2. Uh, a lot of rock, but I didn't really get into rap until, like, the SoundCloud era. I think, like, around, like, Lil Uzi, X, and that started getting me into that. I think when X passed, that was something, like, I was, like, I got to, like, continue to do this. I got to do something, be as big and, like, influential in a way as him. Right, right. And then with doing, like, uh, music and vocally, were you always, like, was there some vocal training, or did you always just like singing or, like, doing melodic yeah. things? Yeah, I was definitely in vocal training since, like, around, like, four. I think I started vocal training. And then I kind of stopped at, like, 12, gave myself, like, a break to do my own thing because I was, like, growing up and, like, just messing around doing stupid stuff. And then I got back into the music at, like, right. and then doing, like doing, 15. And then we're doing music with, you can say, like, the little Uzis, obviously, like, the Trippy Reds, Travis Scott's, like, they're doing a lot of, like, genre blending music. Was that sort of, yeah. I guess, your introduction as well? Like, you like to also do the rock rager and a mixture with the hip hop underground, you know, yeah, that scene. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. I'm very um uh I like to do a lot of indie rock. I just started experimenting a little more with like metal in a way and trying to like grunge up my voice a little bit to like Nirvana and stuff like that. But right, right. Um, yeah, a lot of it was like I kinda wanted to actually rap when I first started, like actual full on rap. But now I'm kinda right, like right. more of like just making music where it's like I want it to be like a good time in a way. Right, right. And is your type of music, is that sort of, like, prevalent where you're from, where you, where you, where you grow up? Um, no, honestly, no. I think I'm kind of, like, the outcast out of, like, the people in my city, because a lot of the people in New York are doing, like, drill and, like, right, a lot right. of, like, R&B, and I'm kind of just doing, like, concert music, rage music, indie rock music, and, like, a bunch right, of other right. stuff. And, like, do you feel like that kind of puts you at a disadvantage or an advantage in coming into a scene where... It's not a place where things where the music is so versatile. It's a it's a disadvantage in your own city, but it's an advantage when you're going more globally and worldwide. Right, right. So how how is that though? How is the experience of leaving your city, going somewhere else, and basically finding a niche in a place where you probably didn't think that someone else across state lines, across country lines, would have heard your music? It's definitely different. Because you kind of expected it. Like, you look at, like, all these past artists, like, let's say, like, uh, Cardi or Uzi or, like, Juice World. Their cities are, like, blasting them. And then right, it's just, right, like, right, I don't, exactly, I don't yeah. see it, but I know it's going on. Because right, I got right, people right. texting me a hundred times a day, like, yo, this song's fire. Right, and it's right. it's, like, I have, like, my own little fan base in New York. But, it, like, it's a lot of it is, like, Europe. A lot of it's, like, Atlanta, Cali, Florida. Did that sort of broaden your perspective on, like what it means to be successful as an artist essentially or your avenues of going to success in a way yes but like at the same time it's kind of like i'm doing something where i know it's like working but like i'm not able to see it in a way but like yeah, I do exactly see, like yeah. I, I see it more over the phone like but it's not like when i do shows in new york a lot of people like just know me like from that but like when i'm like doing some let's say if i were to go somewhere else and play my music it would be like yo that's fire and i know him like and then I would right, exactly, right. So, I mean, does that sort of, is that the goal, though? Do you feel like your music can yeah. cater to a New York audience one day or can essentially I think be... It could, in a way, like, it could cater to anybody because a show is a show. Like, when, when a show right. comes on or it's played in the clubs, or, like, when you're playing it with your friends, that's, like, at the end of the day, that's the music it's going to wind up being. But, like, um... Fan base wise, I think it could be as strong as in New York as it could be somewhere else, but it's just going to be a little harder being that I would have to change the sound of the whole city. And then how did you essentially find your community in a city where there are far and few between other artists, other producers? 
other people that are trying to make music like you? How do you essentially find those pieces to uh, to form collaborations? Um, a lot of it comes from shows. Like uh, I've worked with like High Tolerance, AMG, to name a few. A lot of my friends, uh, my boy Rossi, who does music, has connected me with a bunch of people from New York that make music, a couple other people. Then I started working with like uh, one of my old managers, Chris Clemenza, at the time. I connected with like Busy Banks and a couple of those people in that New York scene. Right, right. And then do you feel like essentially the the music, your music, as you said, can cater to any sort of audience that loves music, loves dancing, loves raging, loves going to concerts, loves connecting to music. It can kind of connect through a Busy Banks who essentially is more of a drill artist or other artists that are more, you know, uh, synonymous with your sound, essentially. Yeah, yeah, 100%. I think that um, mu music is its own thing. So no matter what, like, like, let's look at, like, TikTok, for example. A lot of it, like, there's a bunch of sounds I don't like, but a bunch of thousands of other people like. So at the end of the day, there's going to be its uh, its crowd. There's a crowd in New York, but I just got to find that crowd in a way. Right. And then now, like, pushing your own music, right? Like, the beginning of this year, as we look at it, you just dropped a song called Twice, right? Let's, what's, what's the process behind that song, and what does it mean to you? And, like, what was the the, the experience towards producing rollout and pushing it with the marketing and everything so that was like a very like weighted on song and it's actually kind of funny because we dropped a song the night before as like a pre-game to the song and that's the one that went viral it did like ten thousand, and then twice right, we right. did like a couple thousand but it was like th the other song is the one that's going up so originally when i did that song it was like the day of my second show i recorded at like 3 a.m and I showed it to my friends. I wasn't big on the song originally, but my friends were like, yo, this is the one. I was like, all right. So we contacted Richard Amiri's manager and got Amiri on it. Mm -hmm. And then we dropped the song and I'm like, I got a lot of good feedback on that song, but I had a different song going at the time. So it was really weird because it kind of messed up our whole rollout doing it with like a right, bunch right, of promo right. pages. Yeah, but it was really dope though to do that song. And what allows you to be so flexible in things like that where you're really pushing for a song, you really, or you're not pushing for a song, right? And people around yeah. you are saying, no, this song is it, this song is it. And it kind of changes up your entire thing. Like what, what essentially is the process in getting to that final decision of saying, okay, we're pushing this or we're not pushing this, or this is how it's going to go in final concrete. Yeah. So a lot of it is like what, when I think about it, it's more, whatever is meant to be is what's meant to be. That song was made back in like August of 2022. So, right. like, it's a it's a different wave in the underground. The underground is, like, a constant shift in wave. So when I look at it, it's kind of like, I did that song thinking it was going to, like, that was, if I dropped that song at that time and I had enough promo for it, it would have been, like, a hundred times up as the song I just did now. But, like, at the same time, it still gives me, like, a lot of uh, flexibility to just jump song to song because it gives somebody else a different song to listen to after. And do you think in creating songs or promoting songs or marketing songs that, there's a sense of uh, following the wave or following the trend, so to speak, because granted, at the end of the day, it is your art, is your creativity, but, you know, practicality reasons, you have to eat, right? Like, you got to live yeah, on your own, you got to do your own thing. Yeah, so yeah. to get to, you know, that point of morality with the views, with the shows, that's, that's our third. Is there a sense of, oh, yeah, this song is following what's going on right now, or this song is, we're making this song to follow the trend of what's going on right now, or something like that? Yeah, I think 100% a lot of it is more uh, trend-based now in a way. But um, I think if you follow the wave and you're dropping the songs as the wave is going, you're going to go up with it. I think that's right, like right. a lot of what these new artists are doing, like Don Corleo, Hard Rock, Roland Thrax, a bunch of them like that. And it's working successfully. So it's kind of starting to show for like more of the, uh, not the smaller artists, but the ones on the come up to be right, like, right. yo, we got to get on the wave and just follow it. Right. And what's going on, like, because you're essentially, like you said, following the, the 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 era of the SoundCloud artists, right? And now we're in the era of the TikTok artists, the creative, whatever people want to call it, but there's a higher number of people doing music today, right? Do you feel like um, trends and variety is a metric of your own success as well as an artist, as putting your music out? Is that sort of how you gauge your success? I kind of think in a way, the way that it's like working right now is each person is going to blow up from their own trend, but the music right. is going to be a wave of things no matter what. So each trend right. you're going to have to be like, 
different in a way, and then that's gonna blow up. But you could still have a song that's on the same wave as different artists. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And now that you're, you know, with the idea of SoundCloud, go into the idea too, and now with internet artists, right? There eliminates the need for these major labels, these a uh, and R people to essentially bring you guys in and hand you a 360 deal, hand you a bunch of money for a single, and then just drop you off later, right? Because the internet essentially yeah. is your label, right? Now with you growing up is and blowing up, is that sort of the sentiment as well? Like, do you think that there kind of defeats a need for a label where you can just keep doing what you're doing independently? I think a lot of it, um, at the end of the day, you're going to need a label to push you because a lot of like... Uh, so let's say like TikTok, if you have a big content creator that's not on it, right. like once you jump on that app, it's going to be like, oh, let's push him because he's on it and it's still going to do successful. But a lot right. of it needs a label too, to be like, yo, this guy's uh, on our label or yo, this guy's like one of our artists. So it, it kind of goes both ways, but you could be successful either way and not need a label or need a label at the same time. Right. And I guess, there's, like I said, it gives you today more flexibility in growing your brand, promoting yourself, building your name, where if a label does approach you, you have a lot more leverage to then come with. So now pushing later, you have a new single, Stay Quiet. Stay Quiet is a single album. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, new single, single yeah, 100%. New single coming out actually today. It came out two days ago. Yeah, yeah. I was going to push it a little bit. So I dropped it to SoundCloud through like a private link, but I didn't push right. it. And then I privated it. So I wanted to get a video done for it. So we kind of scrapped okay. it like like the day of release and we're going to push it back another week just so I have enough promo. And um, I don't know. I kind of want to do something like different with it. Like I want to have a bunch of people just go to the city and just like go crazy. We have like 50 people that are like, yo, we're ready to go. And then just have a video go insane. But that that song is uh, just like very different because it's a Deftone sample and we know a lot of people are on that wave right now. So we want to do something right, right. different. So when we do do it, it's like, yo, this is different. And like like I said, with the flexibility and changing rollout, experimenting with different things, do you feel like that offers to the people listening to you and watching your journey a little bit more transparency and seeing that not everything that your first idea isn't perfect, right? Your first idea and how you want things to go isn't the best way to do it. Or you allow yourself also to say, you know what? My fans deserve something better. I deserve this song to serve something better. This deserves a bigger rollout. This center does that. You feel like that offers your fans a little bit more transparency into your process. Yeah, I think I kind of want to make it for like anybody that supports me. Like I want them to feel like they're a part of it in a way. So like when I'm making these videos, I'm like I'll text my a bunch of people that support my stuff. I'll be like, yo, come out, like just come and have have fun, like just go crazy, have fun, bring your energy. Like I want them to feel like when if when I do start getting like that big traction, that big push. It's like, for them, it's like, yo, we were a part of that. I want them to right. be like a puzzle piece to my own puzzle. Right, right, right. And I think that's also what it speaks to as well. Like like you said, like in the New York scene, the indie rock, even like the emo rap or the grunge scene isn't exactly the most prevalent scene right now, but that's what the movement is, right? It's talking to those individuals in the LA or the Miami or the Atlanta that also don't necessarily have a very heavy indie rock grunge scene but there are people there that really do mess with the music, you know? So yeah, it yeah. definitely adds to the wave. And I feel like in adding to the wave, you have a fashion line, a, fa a clothing brand, a sort of branding merchandise, if I'm not mistaken, that's also in yeah, line yeah. with your brand as well. Yeah, yeah. It's very, um. so I've tried to keep it like very low key in a way, but it's going to be called uh, Bad Intentions. I'm going to probably drop a surprise project or something small next week. So I could start rolling out the brand because I want it to be something where it's like that brand is kind of like I want that to be like, yo, we're young. We could do whatever we want in a right, way. Right, 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 right. Get away with it. I want that right. brand to be like me in a way. Right, right. That young anarchist, like young, yeah. wild and free. Exactly. Feeling. Yeah. And you you wear a couple. If I'm not, you wear a couple, is the hat, I think, also. Uh, no, no, this is a narcissist. Okay. Got it, got it. And then you also, like, go into collaborations as well. Do you, you collaborate also with other artists, designers, uh, producers as well? You also make music, right? You you make your mm -hmm. own beats. So how did you get into production, using, a, using the software? Was it just self-taught or was it you getting into some sort of technical education? 
So in a lot of a way, a lot of my music now, I just, I'm starting to just engineer it, but I have a lot of creative input on the beat. So I'll chop up the samples and I'll send it to my producer. I'm like, yo, this is what we got to do. This is what, like what we could do something different with. And I'm kind of just like going through samples. Like it'll be like 3 a.m. and I'll just chop something up and I'll get like a little bit of like a base of what I want, but not like a full pro like product in a way. Right, right. And I guess working with all these other individuals are helping you hone your skills as well as a producer. Is that there? Is that something that we're going to probably see more in the future? You producing beats for other people or producing an album and rapping over it all by yourself? I think what I want to do in a way is um, I want to have my full creative input because I want the album to be my album, not like right. a YouTube album. This is a YouTube album with my vocals or this is a beat pack I got out of my email with my vocals right, in a way. Right. You want like a you want your college dropout. You want your yeah written by, produced by, direct by you, everything you. Yeah, exactly. Now that's tough. And then do you think that essentially in this day and age that there is uh a decline? I personally feel like there's a decline of projects, like complete projects where individuals are from top to bottom looking at complete projects. Is that something that you're trying to break out of the mold of to a complete uh standalone project from top to finish full body of work yeah so 100 percent. i think the project i'm working on now it's called uh life is what you make it i want to make like 15 to 20 songs but i want it to be something where it's like yo this is one of the best projects i've ever listened to like i want it to be like that um like a college dropout or uh goodbye and good riddance by like juice world where it just tells right, right, a right. story like 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 an igor in a way by tyler the creator is what i kind of refer to this project as that's my igor right. in a way right and now looking forward into the year, like we we talked about, you have this single that was going to be released, but will be released in a bigger, big, bigger banger faction, right? And you also have an album that is TBA, TBA in the on the release date, but will be dropping yeah. this year, maybe. I'm thinking like maybe August, maybe. Okay, maybe. okay. Is there anything else that we need to be looking forward to this year to to have our eyes on? A hundred percent, I want to say the song Famous that I'm dropping. It's one of, like, my favorites. And I think it kind of just kind of relates to, like, struggles for, like, other artists that are in, like, the same boat as me. Like, trying things, it's not working. And then you get that one that works, in a way. Right, right. And as we get into it, I always like to do a, a, a lightning round to get, you know, to get to know people. I don't know who's watching this, mate. <laughs> They want to get to know you a little better or want to get you a little gift, send it to your DMs. I don't know. I'm just going to be the person that gets that information, right? So mm -hmm. hopefully, you know, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't scare you off too much. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so the first place, the first thing I want to do is talk about where is the, your favorite places you've traveled to before? I really love going to Florida a lot because I kind of see that as like a second New York with just better weather. Oh my god, yes. I hate the cold. You hate the cold? I hate the, the cold. cold is no, terrible. I, I hate being here. Like when I'm like in my studio, I'll record in my house. I'm like, I don't even know why I'm doing this because it's like 10 degrees, but I just do it anyway. Uh back to your studio though. What is your favorite song that you've made? I don't know, because it like changes every week. I think the song uh we're gonna I don't even know what we're gonna name it yet. It's like gonna be Are You Ready or Break It Down and it samples DX. And I've always wanted okay. to do like a WWE sample. So I think it's like really different because it's something like I've never really heard before. Right. Or right. like my, my release songs, I would say alone because that's me as like me in a way. There's like right, no other right. song that sounds like it. Right. Do you prefer concerts or studio time? I'm very big on the concerts because I'll I'll go to concerts, but I won't like I'll wear like like a ski mask or something because I wouldn't want right, people right. to know it's me. Right. But like I'm it very just big in there on the, the vibe. concerts. Yeah, I love mosh pitting and all that. I love going crazy, turning up. So when people do it for me, it's like, damn, like this this is like possible. I'm like I think about it on stage. I'm like, yo, I'm gonna like be able to change the world, bro. Right. And I know you're a big, you're a big fashion guy. You like to you like to be stepping out in, in the designer. So what are three brands that you got to put us on to right now? I'm going to say Narcissist by Playboy Cardi is definitely my number one because I, it's just fire and it just influences me to, like, do my own thing in a way. Um, I definitely want to say I'm very big on Balenciaga, but, like, I know there's a lot of controversy behind it. But besides the controversy, I do like the clothing. 
And I love Rick Owen. I love Rick Owen so much. That's like my number one ever. Oh, you like all black. You like yeah. all decked out all black trench coat, combat boots. Yeah, yeah. Like... Yeah, I love it. Anything like that's just like nobody's wearing it or like he's, they're going to look at me and be like, yo, what is he wearing? That's what right, I want. Right, right, right. And, you know, for, I know this week is Valentine's, Valentine's Day. This is probably not going to uh, release before Valentine's Day, but maybe whoever's watching this is a little late and, you know, they want to get into your good graces. So what is your ideal Valentine's Day gift? I think maybe making something that actually shows that you care for somebody. Because I think a lot of, like, jewelry, gifts, and stuff like that. I got my girl in the other room, so I got to be, like, a little chill about it and go around it. <laughs> I mean, maybe she's hearing like, this right now. She about to get you yeah, something nice right. about something. It's it. okay. It is what it is. Um, I think you got to make something that actually shows that you care about somebody. Because realistically, bro, we're in the winter. A lot of people are really just naturally depressed, naturally not happy with themselves. And, like, it's very gloomy out and rainy and just a lot. It doesn't feel like a winter in a way. It just feels very dark. So... Do something that genuinely shows that you care for somebody and, like, actually appreciate them. Getting into appreciating someone and thinking about the next person, my last question is, you know, going through this journey, you always have people watching this that are going through their own journey, right? So from you to that person, what are three lessons that you want to share to that next person that is going through their creative process as well? I think the number one thing to know as an artist is that not everybody is going to be in it to push you. I think there's a right. lot of things that people make mistakes and it's very be believable. Like I just seen it yesterday with my boy who's an artist, like just dumb things that people are going to scam people out of. Just do you and actually make sure you're around people that believe in you. Um, number two, I'm going to say, don't, don't ever like record on your phone and try to invest <laughs> in yourself as soon as possible. Cause you could have the best talent and be on like, Apple headphones, and then when you step in a studio, you could have that song that takes you off the ground so easily. Right, right. And number three, like, it, everybody says it, be yourself. Like, a lot of people, like, are on these rage beats, and they're like, oh, I want to be the next Uzi, I want to be the next Cardi, be the next you. Because you're going to go further when people are talking about your name and not somebody else's. Wow. wow. Straight, right to the point. I like it. Yeah. I like it. I like it. Thank you so much, TG, for coming in and kicking it with me, man. It's been a dope conversation. Congrats to you on all your successes thus far, man. And Thank all the success that you're about to have and all the music that's about to drop and the apparel line and everything else is, that's going to happen for you after that, too. Thank you, bro. I appreciate it. Of course, of course. You got any last words for us before we head out of here? Enjoy everything that I'm about to drop because I'm about to go crazy. <laughs> Yo, guys, thank, thank you so you, much for another episode it. of Kicking with Akachi. You can check out this episode on our Instagram page at the DC Voice and on YouTube at the DC Voice as well. You can check out my guy TG on all streaming platforms, SoundCloud, Apple Music, and Spotify. Make sure you check out his new latest single, Twice. And man, we're out of here. Peace. Thank you.